Have you ever wondered how professional songwriters write their songs? By the end of this video, you're going to know my step-by-step -step approach to songwriting, which I've been using to earn myself a living and to pick up a few awards here and there. My name is Trina Bellamide. I'm a professional songwriter and I've been in the business for almost 30 years. If you'd like to get to know me a little better, you can visit my website. It's trinabellamide.com. I'm posting links below. And while you're at it, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that every time I upload new content every Friday, you'll be the first to know about it. Let's get started. There is no right or wrong way to write a song. Each songwriter has their own style of songwriting. But for professionals like me that usually write for clients or for particular artists who want a certain style or certain groove or certain message to come across, we can't afford to like wait for inspiration to come and we can't afford to just wing it. It helps that we have our own system to ensure that we write the best song possible. Step one, purpose. What is the intention of the song? What's it for? Who's it for? Who's gonna listen to the song? Who's gonna sing the song? Are you writing for a company or an organization that wants its own theme song? Are you writing for a contest? Does the contest have a particular theme? Are you writing for a particular artist? In which case you'd need to know their style and their range. Or are you writing for a church congregation? Maybe it's a gospel song that you want many people to sing. In which case you need to make the melody a little easier to remember. Maybe the vocal range needs to be smaller. Also, you need to know the budget for the project because you can't go all crazy on the production side later on and hire musicians here and there or have like an orchestral arrangement for it or a big band if you can't afford it. Knowing the budget and knowing these parameters will impact your creative decisions down the line. Step two, genre. What's the overall feel or groove of the song? Is it going to be up-tempo or going to be slow? What's the time signature going to be? Is it going to be a waltzy 3-4 or 6-8 song or a usual 4-4 song? Is it going to be a ballad or a dance track or an R&B song? At this point, sometimes I like to listen to other songs and recordings and make them like a musical reference or sometimes the client will give me a peg and say, I want my song to kind of sound like this or have this kind of feel or this kind of instrumentation. So a musical peg would serve as an inspiration. Step three, key message and title. Now this is an important step in the whole songwriting process. What's the key message of the song? It needs to be clear and it needs to be communicated clearly and the title is going to be part of that conveying of that message. So you've got to choose a good title that can sum up or at least hint at the overall message of the song. The title is very important. It's like the brand of the song. What I like to do is if I have a title in mind, sometimes I'll Google it and if there's another song of the same title, especially if it's a hit song, I'll likely change the title. But that's how important the title is to me. I'd like for it to be unique and I'd like for it to kind of sum up the overall message. The overall message needs to be simple and clear. If it's something that I can't sum up in one sentence, I'll probably rethink it because it could mean that there's too many messages that need to be included in the song and that could muddle up the whole thing. Step number four, structure. Is it going to be a verse chorus song or a verse bridge song? A verse chorus song is better for recall and a verse bridge song is probably more effective if you want to tell a story. And that's why a lot of musicals use that structure. Step number five, title placement. Depending on the structure of the song which I decide on, that's gonna determine for me where the title is gonna be. If it's a verse chorus song, the title will be in the chorus. If it's a verse bridge song, the title will be at the end of each verse. Now, how does that impact the rest of the song? 
The placement of the title in the song is key when it comes to developing the song's payoff. A payoff is like a reward. It's, it's that rewarding feeling that the audience feels when they listen to a song and they feel like, oh, I see what you did there. I get the message of the song. It's an important aspect of songwriting. It's what separates the okay songs from the really great ones. Step number six, construction. Now, in the actual songwriting, I like to figure out, are there any parts of the song that require special attention? Is there anything that I need to prioritize? For example, if I'm writing a song for a client and they want a particular message to come across, or if I'm joining a contest, and it's a theme song writing contest, and the message is of prime importance, then I might do the lyrics first. Now, if it's a song that I'm writing to highlight the vocal range of an artist, or if it's a song that needs to be sung by a particular set of people, then I would take their vocal range into consideration and maybe prioritize the melody first. Or if I'm trying to tell a story, and if I'd like for the story to have like a twist at the end as a grand payoff, then I'd probably do that last part first and work my way back. Once I'm done with the important parts of the song, then I'll build everything else to support those important parts. If it's a verse chorus song I'm working on, we all know that the chorus is the most important part of the song, then I'll do the choruses first and then write the verses after and make sure that every verse supports the chorus. I'll figure out if it needs a bridge, I'll figure out if it needs a pre-chorus, but everything needs to support the main parts. Step number seven, creating the rough demo. Usually for me, it's just a piano and vocal rough demo. It's more like a sketch, especially if it's a ballad, I just need to see the overall flow from start to finish. Now, if it's an up-tempo song, I'll probably put in some drums and some bass lines. The idea is to just see the overall picture of the song. And at this point, sometimes some editing of the song happens. Maybe I'll see that, oh, I didn't put a bridge and maybe the song is looking for one. Or maybe I'll change a few lines here and there, change the melody up if I need to. So creating the rough demo or overall sketch will give me a better picture of the song as a whole and I'll do my editing in certain parts where they're needed. And then we have step number eight, which is the final production of the song. Usually I like having somebody else do the tracking or the instrumental arrangement of the song because it's not really my strength. And I like having somebody else put in their spin on my song with my instructions, of course, and my overall direction for the song. This is where the budget comes in. If it's a big budget, then I can afford to have live instrumentation. Or if it's a limited budget, I still have my go-to trackers and arrangers who do a fabulous job of putting in like these synthesized instruments that actually sound like the real thing. And then I'll probably put in some backup vocals, guide the lead singer, and then after all that recording, we go on to mixing and eventually mastering. And so that is my step-by-step -step approach to songwriting. Do leave a comment below and tell me what you think of this video. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button. I would truly appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.